So one of the things that we should discuss is what if uh, and when we when we're dealing with a point charge in a magnetic field, uh, the point charge took up no space, right? QV cross B. So we didn't have to worry about whether things varied or not, really, um, because we, all we had to do was calculate the force on the point charge at any position. Um, but it, but for the current carrying wire, um, we have calculated it for a constant. Um, a wire, uh, the, the, the current in a, I'm sorry, the current at any point in a wire should be the same everywhere. Um, so the, the current is uh, constant over space, is constant throughout the magnetic field. It may not be constant in time, it may change in time, um, but it's c constant over space. Um, and the, we, we calculated this, uh, the, f the magnetic force, magnetic force, um, <clears throat> for uh, a straight wire in a constant magnetic field. What if the wire isn't straight? So let's just say I have a, um, a different current. Let's make it a green current. And let's just say that that green current is something that is not straight. Um, and so now how would we calculate the magnetic force on the green wire? Well, it's no longer uh, got a constant direction. So what we need to do is do what we always do when, we, when things vary. We need to break them up into small pieces and just pretend over and, and say over a small distance, right? Over a small distance, dl, um, we can assume that it's approximately constant, right? And then we have to add it up. Uh, over all the DLs, right? So we say over a small DL, small DL, break it up into little DLs, and each of those pieces is approximately pointing in a constant direction. So we can say that for a single piece, the magnetic force DF is equal to I DL cross B. So this now allows for a changing direction of wire. Notice that it also allows for a non-constant magnetic field. Because let's say instead of the wire changing over space, that the magnetic field changed over space. But we still say for a small portion of the wire DL, we're gonna assume that the field is approximately constant at that space and we're gonna add it up over space. Um, so let me do an example of that. That's a little easier to do than a curvy wire that I drew there because with the curvy wire we'd need to know that I drew that you see in the picture, the green wire, we'd need to know the direction at every point in order to do the integral, right? Because the integral FB is going to be the integral of DF sub B, which is the integral of I DL cross B. Um, <clears throat> and uh, and uh, we would need to know... Uh, how L changed with space, um, and I haven't, you know, and that may not be trivial. Let's just pretend, let's keep going with the example I've got before I do a simpler example. We're not going to solve this example all the way out because, again, I have not given you a function, and I'll show you where the function that I haven't given you. Because this is going to simplify to the current is the same everywhere along the wire. That's that's a given. It's a it's a it's a it's a single current carrying wire, so the current is constant in space. It's the same at each of the positions of DL, so it can come out of the integral. And then what we're left with is DL, and this is where um, we can uh, do the cross product DL B sine theta. Um, realize that we need to calculate the magnitude of the of the force on this wire because the direction of the force is going to be different every, at every point on the wire. It doesn't make sense to talk about a single direction. The direction of the force is going to be different at every point on the wire. Um, actually, for this particular wire that I've drawn where B goes up the page and I, presumably in two dimensions, is in the page, um, then the, the force is still just out of the page everywhere, right? So the force is out of the page. So we can, fit, we can figure out the direction here. Um, it doesn't vary because um, at, at DL cross B is out of the page everywhere. Okay, so then uh, B is a constant. Remember we said here we're varying the direction of DL. So B is a constant, I, B. And what isn't constant is the angle between DL and B. So it's sine theta dl. So then in order to do this integral, 
in order to do this integral, sorry, I'm trying to write and talk at the same time, uh, we would have to know the relationship between dl and theta. And that's where I'd have to tell you something about how the angle of this wire changes through space in order to give you a relationship between dl and theta. And then we could do this integral. Because remember, what's changing here is theta. But the integral variable is dl. So we would have to relate those two. We can't pull the sine theta out of the integral, and dl is what we're integrating over. So we need to relate those two to do this, do this integral. So the picture I've drawn is not, a, is not a good example to do quantitatively, but let's do one that we can do quantitatively. Okay, I've drawn a problem here. I have to explain it. So let's say that we have a current carrying wire in a field that varies only along the direction of the wire, meaning what I mean is that we've got some r equals zero here, and as we move away from r, the magnetic field gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And let's say that the current is also pointing in the direction of R. So we're saying that the, the magnetic field gets smaller along the wire, along the length of the wire. Um, and let's say that the magnetic field gets smaller as a function of 1 over R. Um, so I'm just saying B is proportional to 1 over R. And let's make the proportion, let's just make an arbitrary proportionality constant. Whoops, let me change the color. But we can just write that as, if I say b is proportional to 1 over r, then that's the same as saying b is equal to a over r, where a is some arbitrary constant. We'll just assume we know the value of that constant. Written out the rest of the problem. So um, I'm asking, what is the force of a length L of wire? Just so, you know, we could say 1 meter or whatever, but I'm just going to use letters. What's the force of a length L of the wire from r equals r0? So we're starting, so we can't start the wire from r equals zero because the magnetic field would be infinite. So anyway, so it doesn't matter. I'm just saying f uh, from r equals r zero to L. So we're just showing what's the force on, whoops, well, on this length of wire, that's really, what's the force on this length of wire is we're asking, um, which is a distance r equals r zero from the origin of the field and um, goes to a distance L along the wire. And let's say the wire just carries current, current I. So <clears throat> we're going to write that the force the magnetic force, the magnitude, oh, let's, do, let's just do the magnitude and then we can do the direction separately. So I'm gonna do the magnitude of the force is equal to I dl b sine theta. Um, and so therefore the force F b, I keep on putting the vector sign, Fb, the magnitude of the force, is equal to the integral of that. And the current is a constant, I. B is not a constant, so we can't pull that out. Um, <clears throat> and dl is the integral variable. And what's theta? What's theta? Um, I'm not sure I said it, but I drew it. The magnetic field is into the page everywhere. Um, that's, that was the little circles with X's. The magnetic field was into the page everywhere. So the magnetic field is uh, 90 degrees relative to the wire. So we get I, B, D, L, uh, sine theta and sine of 90 degrees is one. Um, and so that's where we are right now. Okay, so that just that's in terms of, um, that's actually not in terms of all the givens. So we can write that as I integral B is A over R, D, L. Okay, so um, what is dl? dl is the is the direction along the the direction along the wire. dl is the same as the dr direction, right? So the variable, the integral variable here is l, but the uh, the variable that we have to integrate is r, and so we need to find a relationship between those. dl is in the same direction as dr. dr points to the right and dl points to the right and they're just unit length vectors uh, so we can change this to i and we can actually take out the a because the a is a constant a 1 over r dr so what we're left with is that the magnitude of the magnetic force is i times the integral a times the integral of 1 over r dr so that's just plugging into IL cross B and recognizing that the R direction is the same as the L direction. Um, and then we need to know the limits of integration. The limits of integration are from R0, right? We're starting from R0 and we're integrating to R0 plus L. So now we do that integral. And the integral of 1 over R is the natural log 
on IA, and we've done we've done this kind of integral before, or you look it up. Um, it's the natural log of R evaluated from R0 to R0 plus L. And so we get IA natural log of R0 plus L over R0. So that's the answer. That's the magnitude of the force. Um, and we already gave the direction of the force. I think we did. No, maybe we didn't. Um, that's the magnitude of the force. What's the direction of the force? Okay, let me go back. That's the magnitude of the force. Um, it comes from just integrating uh, I dl b sine theta. And the direction of the force is in the direction of dl cross b, right? So dl is to the right, b is into the page. With your right hand rule, you take your right hand, you point it in the direction of the current, you wrap your fingers towards the direction of the magnetic field into the page, and your thumb points upwards. So the force is upwards. So that is how we deal with variable uh, fields or variable currents. Um, we just have to integrate. We have to integrate and leave the variables in the integral and pull out the constants, right? So again, here I was a here I was a constant and b was a variable, so we pulled out the i, we left in the b. If, if i was to vary with space and b was a constant, then we could pull out the b and leave in the i, etc. Okay, um, there you go, i l cross b.